David Rambajan. Welcome today, um, Industrial Construction Services. I am pleasure to have you on the show. If you could just let's tell us a little bit about yourself. Sure, Eric. Yeah, I've uh, um, got a construction company. I've had okay. the business twenty five years, and um, we've uh, we do pretty much uh, federal work. About okay. ninety percent federal work. We do okay. some local municipal work as well, but it's all commercial and government work. Okay. And um, the last uh, 15 years or so, really got more into the federal, uh, went through the 8A program, right. and graduated that, okay. and uh, have been taking it from there. Yeah. That's, a, that's actually a great segue. And when did you graduate the 8A program? It's been about uh, five years now. Okay. 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 Five years. So you you got it back, uh, what, 2010, something like that? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. 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 No, actually, that it seems like when I'm looking back, um, my guests are also fellow award winner, SBA award winners for their states and some um, humanitarian awards and things like that. Small business of the year, small business advocate. But it seems to me that a lot of them got their start and you started your business earlier, but a lot of them really took off right after the recession, 2008. Um, is that when you really got started, 2007 I, and eight? I will tell you. Federal? Though I am business for 25 years, and right. you know I always share this. Um, I was self-employed for 10 years. I mean, right. I, yeah. I, I was doing okay. You know, I was doing okay. Right. Um, I wasn't really growing anything. Okay. Um, not a ton of retained earnings. You know, but right. yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but I was good. Um, no doubt about it. A day in the federal work helped me to scale. Okay. And I leveraged all the parts of it uh, yeah. in the program to uh, to do that. Wow. And how did you first learn about that program? You know, I heard about the federal and uh, prior to that, I'd been doing city, county, state work. Okay. And um, it was t in my, I'm in Chicago, politics, paperwork, all of it, yeah. issues, waiting to get paid, change orders, just yeah. pain, inspections, ins oh, yeah. construction inspections, wait till they come, if they show up, all that other stuff. Yeah. So I thought to myself, federal, I'm jumping out of the pot into the fire. Why would I, why would I do that? Yeah, yeah, yeah perceptively, I share that, that that's how I think, but I learned differently. I learned that my friends who are doing their construction work outside of federal, I tell them, Hey, I'm doing the same work you are, but I have no inspections and I get paid. I tell them the same thing. And, you know, it is beautiful. Uh, you know, it's interesting. That was some of my questions I had coming down later on in the interview. I said, where, you know, where did you get your start at? And did you experience those same things about not being paid? Yeah. You know, yeah. um, and you've already it, hit those those key points. It's a tough thing, and you know, I am, I am. Uh, I'll share with you this real quick. I'm thankful okay. for the opportunity to grow my business, and I'll say, you know, a thank you to you too, because what happened is, as I was growing this business, I thought there are other successful entrepreneurs in my circle or that I see, but we never learn from them, and um, a little bit of a disservice. I mean, you know, in the military. Or, or even as a parent, if you're walking somewhere and you see there's something you're going to trip on, you're going to look behind you and tell them, watch out, you're going to trip on this, be careful. Right, right. But at the same time, you leave these, like I was leaving the 8A program, and as I was leaving the program with all this knowledge that I obtained, which I wish I had the first year that I got in, okay. but I'm leaving it, here people come their first year, right. I just walk right by them. And I told the SBA, well, first I tried to sell them, I said, extend my 8A for another year and I'll mentor a bunch of people. There you go. <laughs> like no, you're it. out. You're out. Okay. I like it. That was a good one. Yeah. But, but I've since, um, <clears throat> you know, committed to volunteer uh, and paid forward. I'm on the board for the SBA. Yep, and I also, I every week I'm meeting with a small business and or speaking at events to really share my perspective of what helped me scale the business. Oh, that's great. That's going to be a great conversation for later on today. That's it. No, that's excellent. Um, and what's interesting is that now there is, a, I had him on the show probably about four weeks ago, the regional administrator for our particular region here, which is the nine states, North Carolina, South Carolina, Florida, Georgia, Alabama, Ashley Bell, and they're trying to change that. So I don't know if it's probably people like you that are in the background that'll help pushing it and saying yeah. some of the same things because what they found statistically, they're finding that the people, the program is not, has it not been succeeding as well? And um, I attributed that because, uh, like you said, there was nobody to look up to or to, to mentor or to turn to. 
um, at least when we were doing the program. Um, and we found that. And that's part of the reason why we create this show. Is that that's kind of what you're saying the same along the same lines, right? Yeah, absolutely. And uh, that's good to hear that you shared that. I, I would definitely think that, you know, th there's definitely politics and there's definitely all sorts of things happening. But I think at the center, everybody wants to succeed. Yes. And yes. if you really look at it and we want to succeed and, and, and I believe in small business, whether it's diverse or non diverse, small business is great. And what I learned is, you know, it fuels the economy. It creates jobs. Yeah, it yeah. is, you know, um, important. And so if they really believe that, it's important to take somebody who just spent nine years and who is successful. I mean, mm -hmm. a lot of people who go through the program no, no, no. don't get a project. Yes, <laughs> you know, no, that's what and that's years. what we're saying. Yeah, but for different reasons, you know, um, whatever it may be. But but uh, if you're successful and you've learned something, the government, I think, should put in a program. Sure, there should be a little bit of a benefit. There has to be a little bit. Oh, of incentive, a incentive, and then some sort of incentive, and then go help and I'm doing it because I think it's right to do my my vice president's like hey you're you're constantly going to meet with these people what are you meeting with all these people I said paint it forward I'm thankful yeah. and I think humility um and paint it forward goes a long way wow wow and that's great and what's interesting is I've seen that with a lot of uh, small businesses who've succeeded in these various programs that they want to pay it for and they want to give back how do you decide who you meet with so you know it's interesting <laughs> You, know, I, you I said just, you're meeting with one person a week. That's a lot. Um, minimum one. And uh, they'll come to my office, okay. you know, and I'll give them an hour or two, and you know, which is a lot too. My, is, oh, that's an a hour. Talk. I said, yeah. well, you know, the basis of what I need to share, um, I do a little talk. Uh, mm -hmm. I have these, these little presentations I do, and it starts off with looking at diversity programs, and then it goes into strategic business. Just from my own perspective, through my experience, and um, if you don't get that foundation, and I've made these mistakes, these are mistakes I've made. Uh, I mean, I, I'm a serial entrepreneur, so I have other businesses I do. And um, I've made all these mistakes, and I share these with other people for them to make their best choices, right? So my goals may be different from theirs. That's okay. Yeah, yeah. But in either case, some of the basic foundational um, of how you plan and execute your business uh, relates to everybody. Okay. You want to share some of that? Do you have anything that prepared? Oh boy. You know, Eric, I appreciate you asking these open-ended questions, but it's dangerous. I'll oh. talk for an hour. Uh -oh. okay. <laughs> you need to stop me. You I need just, to have uh, a red light that lights up on my computer. Like, that's, All right. You need okay. to pull back a little bit. But, um, you know, basically one of the things I'll start off with just the diversity. There are many programs. Um, there are city, county, state, federal programs. Um, I think there are great opportunities on the federal side. But is it for you? Is it for you? What is it for you? And so I, I did this talk this week in New York for the veteran conference. And I, I said, you don't go get certified and then try and get work. You find the work that you can provide value for a client, or maybe the EPA, or maybe it's the Federal Reserve, or maybe it's the GSA, maybe it's the Army. You see that you can provide value, that you're like, wow, I can provide a value. Not only that, I could be profitable. Because you don't want to just get work. You no. want to get bottom line yeah. work where you're making a profit. Those two things fit. Now you set up your plan to say, I need this certification. And this is what I'm going to go do. And this is the plan for how I'm going to go after the work. So, so early on, the reason I share that is if I could make money from being certified, I would have made a bunch of money. I was certified by every agency, city, county, state, federal. Right. Yeah. I had thirds. In fact, I was attending events and outreach programs. Uh -huh. I mean, you can full-time attend outreach programs, oh, full-time, go to events. And some of them are great. Some of them are okay. Some of them you've already been to. Yeah. So uh, the next part, when, when, I, when I talk about that, I'll share with you how I look at that and how, to man how I suggest um, you look at managing your time. Okay. No, no, no. That's, that's, that's great. Uh, and, and again, man, you're just flowing. So you're taking me even off topic. That's why, <laughs> that's why I've, I've, you know, I, I've keep, I just keep going along the path that you're taking this conversation yeah. uh, because these, you are touching on all the critical points. Right. Mm -hmm. And it's interesting that you say that uh, in terms of, uh, because for me, what I've experienced recently is there's a lot of people teaching people, say, uh, how to do contracting, right? 
Um, but I think that there's other things that are, like you said, is it right for you? What about the, the other side? What about the non-contract uh, business side, right? Leadership, uh, mental toughness, resiliency, you know, all that stuff. That's where I see people are falling short in some areas. Um, even if you were given all the tools, right, per se, to do these things, what would you do with those tools and how would you use it? And so that's kind of what you've been talking about. And that's why I was really excited to let you keep going uh, yeah. on that line. Yeah. Uh, because I think, like you said, getting, bringing someone to your office, because um, I've had a few entrepreneurs do this. They've brought people in and um, you could give someone a contract, but are they ready for that contract? Can they handle the contract? Is it a profitable contract? Is it what's in their best interest? And I think a lot of those questions have to be answered. Hey, and when you're when you're when you're a young entrepreneur or newer into that industry uh, or whatnot, um, you know our excitement calls our judgment. If you're a real entrepreneur, you know I, I've been excited many times and lost some money. I mean, you know, I had a restaurant that was my MBA right there. You know, it's like spent all this money and it was cool and it was a thing to do. But um, is that what I should have been doing with my time and my money? my energy, my skill, right? Is that where the best place was for my long-term goals? Uh, so, so I think it's normal that the challenge is we also live in a, in a, in a silo. So uh, entrepreneurs are live in a silo and often don't have other entrepreneurs, especially in their lane or doing what they're doing. Yeah. And so their, their beliefs that they're doing everything right is only um, looked at against themselves. So they believe strongly, we believe, Hey, this is what we're doing. I'm on track. I'm leading this. And, uh, you know, I'm the owner. It's going to be great. Well, what we need is other entrepreneurs to say, hey, what do you think of this? Not a pat on the back, like, great. You can get that from your family. Hey, great job. Way to go to start your own business and, and make it happen. But really, I mean, I say things to some of these small business sometimes. And, if, and if, they're, if they're open to it, it's pretty raw. I'm just like, how are you making money? I don't mm -hmm. see it. You know what I mean? I mean, I'm challenging. I, maybe, I, maybe you know something I don't. Right, right, right. But if I don't right. challenge you to say, do you want me to push you or not? Or are you okay? Do you want a pat on the back? Because I could give you that, you could go. Or do you want me to challenge what you're doing? Um, because it's only when we challenge ourselves when we can sharpen that saw and make sure we're on point. Wow, wow. Excellent. Where did you uh, first get your, so I, obviously I, I tracked, I saw you went to college, but let's go back even further. Um, do you believe you're always hard work to be an entrepreneur? Yeah, you know, like when you're yeah. younger, did you trade baseball cards these are, or these are, sell these potato are, chips or these lollipops? Questions. Boy, I'm a, these, these open-ended questions. This dangerous. So I do a little TED Talk thing in it, and I started off and I say, uh, I've always been a serial entrepreneur. At age 14 was my first hustle. Mm -hmm. I was handling out flyers, really. So I don't know how old you are, but you have flyers and you put them on cars and you put them on houses. Yeah. That's yeah. getting the message out. That's the advertising. That's the first Twitter, right? Yeah, so you yeah. put the message yeah. and get it out. No, there. I remember so, those. I remember yeah, those. Yeah. So you put a flyer out and I was making cash. And then I started shoveling snow, mowing lawns, doing uh, uh, um, work, supporting, you know, just some labor work for people. Uh, but yeah, after that, then I got caught up in the whole, uh, there was a little multi-level marketing, looking at that stuff. Okay. And how okay. to do some real estate. And uh, okay. yeah, I do some real estate now. So, but yeah, ever since 14, I just kind of had it. But uh, my parents are immigrants, so um, uh, born here in this country, I thought for sure you got to get an education, and I still do believe that a little bit. But the schooling that you see on my on my on my LinkedIn or on my profile um, is good, but that's not where I learned to be an entrepreneur. Oh. Um, in fact, I think that what helped me most to be an entrepreneur was my boot camp for the Marine Corps. That training was fantastic. Yeah. Right? If I could do that, I'll, I'll share with you one quick example. When I do this little talk, I say, um, I, call, I call it the sharpshooter's blueprint, but a sharpshooter, you know, they handed me, I was 18 years old, they handed me a rifle, said, hit the target. And you could picture holding the rifle, hitting the target. Yeah. But you know, that target was 200 yards down range. That's two football fields. Yeah, wow. Yeah, how do you yeah. do that? Well, the Marine Corps in particular, I think is the only branch that qualifies at 500 yards. So five football fields, I'm taking a, a rifle and hitting a target. How did I do that? And I did it, by the way. I shot expert and I qualified sharpshooter. How did I do that? And it was a big lesson. What I learned is 
uh, very clean and well-maintained weapon, which I liken to ourselves, right? Our personal self. Yeah. We got to be mentally, physically in, 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 in a good place to perform, mm -hmm. right? Be ready to perform. So this weapon was in great working order. And then we managed everything surrounding him in that target. So we learned about everything that's going to that's gonna affect or impact hitting that target, having a solid foundation, watching my breathing, watching the wind, and squeezing the trip, all these little things that you learn. And all of a sudden, you take this little round out of this rifle, it hits five football fields and hits a target. And so um, I liken that a little bit to uh, being a sharpshooter in business. Mm, no, I like, I like that. Um, what, so you were in the Marine Corps. Um, and then I see that when you got out, that's when you kind of start your business. And like I said, you're a solo entrepreneur. How did you get into construction in particular? Yeah, you know, I, I got out, I got my degree. And then um, after my degree, I got a job. I had one, my first and only job. And uh, I decided quickly it wasn't for me. Um, but I didn't know what I was going to do, quite honestly. I'm not going to, you know, I'll tell you, I knew I was not true. I wanted to do something. Mm -hmm. And I looked to leverage some of the um, small business opportunities in the city of Chicago. Mm -hmm. So I did that. And I floundered a little bit over the years because like I share now, I didn't do what I share now. I didn't plan it out. I didn't look at the opportunities. I just wanted to go get contracts and work. And I did. I landed contracts with the city and the county and the airport, and, and it was going okay. Um, but I didn't know where I was going. Right. And then I went back to school a little bit more. I really found myself leaning towards construction. I always did construction, but now we're a prime general contractor. Um, and so I just gravitated towards that. And then uh, I did construction management for a long time. I'm pretty conservative. So I was a little nervous about the bonding. Yeah. And right. um, the 8A, that's what made me turn to prime at risk because the opportunities which were great for construction. Um, I say for construction because I don't know how it is for IT or architect right. yeah, or yeah. things like that. Yes, yes. Right. But for construction, quite honestly, the opportunity was uh, very significant relative to the open market. And so I'm like, let's get the bond and let's go. And yeah. that's when, um, in the last 15 years, that's where I scaled and started at zero bonding and grew my bonding program so that we can uh, prime larger right. contracts. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah I see that. Well, um, along the way, did you, did you so you, I know you did some of those smaller contracts. Did you ever work in the private sector where someone didn't pay you, like one of the big large GC firms? Yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. That happens. Oh, I was, I was that guy, you know, everybody kind of goes through this. Some people get stuck in it and yeah. live their lives as a sub that's check to check, waiting for it to come in, yeah. sort of a hamster wheel. I try and take them off. I try and talk them off the wheel. I'm like, I need you to just put your phone down and listen to me for a second because you can get stuck on there because you have a lot of volume. Mm -hmm. um, you're waiting to get paid. It's rear, and once you get paid, you got other bills. Yeah. It's hard to scale when you're always chasing your tail. Right, right, right. I've yeah. been there. I've been there. That sort of a. I don't. I don't know. You know. I don't want to blame large business. I don't want to blame the big companies. You know, they're trying to be a profitable company. Yes. I tell the small businesses, own what you do. Now, when you're first starting off, I tell you. I would take projects. I would take them if they were oh. low margin. I'd take it if I didn't get, because you're trying to grind, right, you're, you're trying to grow. Yeah, right, right. But, after, but, but what I tell them is that's okay. Only as long as it's a means to, to, to something else, as long as it's a means to get where you need to be, mm. not what you're going to do forever. Mm. Yeah. No, it's, it's tough. And like you said, once you get into that hamster wheel, it's difficult because why, like you said, you need the money and you need it. You need the other project to keep, the team together and to keep the people going and to keep the payroll going. Um, and it, and it can be difficult. And then sometimes people say to me, isn't the federal government harder? Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> Did you hear that? Yeah. 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 Well, there, it's a scary thought. I mean, the only thing they know about federal is taxes and that's scary. Yeah. <laughs> so they're like, <laughs> they're like, man, I don't know about that federal stuff. They haven't been friendly to me lately. Yeah. Well, well, um, you know, what I assure people is it's very tough. Stay away. No. <laughs> so I keep, keep, all the keep everything to myself. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You don't want to get in construction. It's, it's tough. I'm yeah. trying to look at what else I'm going to do. <laughs> no, but no, there's more than enough. There is literally people are like, why are you showing people how to be contractors? I'm like, 
I'll show them to be whatever they want to be. I don't, well, for one thing is they're never going to be me. No. So I'll no. always be me. Yeah. I'm going to get mine, right? Yeah. I'm going to get mine, but there's enough. There's enough out there. There's more than enough um, work for good contractors. And there's also attrition. I mean, you know, I don't know how much longer I got and then I'm going to do something else yeah. or yeah. semi-retire, do something else right. Right. and pull up. That's going to leave room for someone else to come in yeah. and pick up some more work. That's true. So, um, yeah, federal, my, my, my most fun one is, is what I told you before telling my friends who have their contracting companies, I'm not waiting for inspectors and, um, we get paid as quick as seven days. Mm -hmm. I mean, I've been paid sometimes less than, I mean, when that yeah. happened, what it empowered us to do though, in the, in the federal, um, contracting and needs to understand it from the, uh, business development point of view is in construction, you know, there's three big things that I used to do claims consulting for bonding and sureties and things like that when I was doing the consulting work prior to being um, at risk. And in construction, there's three things to me. <clears throat> Communication is king. You have to communicate. You're orchestrating a team. The next thing is workflow. I don't want to see you send one body out. I need the work to be done. I need the, the, the teams. You need to put enough labor to get the work done. And the third thing, and they're all equally important and affect each other, is cash flow. Hmm. And so with this cash flow, I'm able to employ the best subcontractors who enjoy getting paid as long as they perform. And those things help uh, build a good business too. Yeah. No, no. If good subcontractors makes your life, oof. I wouldn't say easy, but it's as easy as, as you could get in construction, I would say. And when, you, and when you can't pay them, you can't get the good ones sometimes. Right. Yeah. No, it's harder. It's harder to do. That's, that's interesting. So you're from Chicago area. Born and raised in Chicago. Okay. Yeah. Cause that's, um, yeah, we, 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 we do work here in Chicago. I've had an office in New York for, I don't know, 15 years. And, uh, we've been doing work in Florida, Panama city, $10 air force base for mm -hmm. about seven years. Okay. Yeah. New York. Um, it's not difficult to work in New York. Yes. The, the minute, unions? Yeah. Well, we, we are only construction managers in New York right now. Okay. All right. And, yeah. and, and that's more of uh, we're, we're on the teams really for the bigger contractors. Right. The state of New York, I just came back from there. They, they implemented a 6% veteran requirement. Requirement. It's the highest in the country for veterans. And so, um, you know, I'm starting to step it up over there now because of that requirement. Some really good opportunities. Oh, that's nice. But we're, you know, what, what, what I'm looking for, I'll share with you, you know, is uh, I learned as I've leveraged the program, I used to think, well, how am I going to do work in another market? Okay. How am I going to compete when I have per diem, when I have to travel, when I have yes. to do this? And one of the other 8A graduates that I knew shared this with me that I'll share with everybody is he said, it's your perception that there are good performing contractors that fit the requirements throughout this, throughout the country. There are markets where everybody who's bidding has per diem. Everybody's coming in because at that base, they don't have, I think I was talking to the guy at Los Alamos um, National Laboratory. Okay. And he told me he's out in the middle of nowhere. He says all his contractors come in from out of town. Uh, so you know there that you can compete with other contractors who are putting in the same sort of a cost that you would. And, um, and so I look for that too. And I also, in New York, what I'm looking at now is my insurance company does not, a lot of people don't like New York because no. it's um, the insurance companies. Yes. It's very difficult. Work with but, comp is difficult in New York. Yeah. But federal contracts in New York, New Jersey for the VA that I'm looking at, I'd love to do it because they can't find contractors to do the work. So what I would look for it's, and it's a tough thing because I think having a joint venture is, is like getting married. You have to have the right partner. It's mm -hmm. very, very critical. Um, but if I can find the right partner in a market, we could do a joint venture and make some money together and deliver some good work. Uh, so I'm working with a company actually out of Rhode Island, and they said they have the same issues at the VA hospitals. They can't find contractors. I'm looking for any good contract. You know, I will invest in my time to fly and go meet people who want to do it. First, you talk to them and everything else. Yeah. But I always say, when you're joint venturing, it's a marriage. I mean, you, 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 got, you have to make sure it's not just business. I mean, the business is great if you could do it and make some money for both of you right. and deliver some good work. 
but you have to both have the same values. You have to both be able to work together. You have to both be able to trust each other. Yeah. So um, it takes time to find the right uh, partner that makes sense. Well, and doing my research, I see you've done a lot of successful joint venturing. We've, uh, we've um, in the 8A program, the mentor protege was still in the 8A. It wasn't right. the all small, uh, right? Okay, yeah, so, so that back, in that, that back when you started, correct. Yeah, the whole duration, my whole term of 8A, all small didn't come out till one year after, mm. which is kind of great for me because I didn't have the competition from any other all small right. JV competitors. JVs, yes. And so we um, were able to leverage that with a uh, local private large business in Chicago mm -hmm. and went around the market to, um, to Pennsylvania, to Louisiana, to Ohio and to Florida and landed work um, leveraging the opportunity really understanding what's it there for? How do you leverage it? How can it be mutually beneficial and profitable? How would you, if looking at it, what you did, how would you advise another 8A firm to um, find that, uh, that mentor, that, that protege, I mean, find a mentor, find the JV partner that they can trust and believe in. How, what would you tell them some of the steps, some of the things to look for in those types of relationships? Yeah, the first thing I'd say is to look at the work you want to do. And the reason I say that is, you know, you, I know you're in construction too. And, yes. you know, I don't know if I'm going to go join venture with Walsh. Uh, the mm. reason is, is because they're so big, right. you know, or with, um, for that matter, Bechtel. I met with Bechtel oh. this past week and the guy goes, Hey, we might want to work with you. And I said, if I can't speak to the owner, I can't do it. Yeah. Bechtel is humongous. Yeah. And they're too big, you know, and if I can't speak to the owner, it's harder. It's just hard. Could it happen? It could happen. I mean, it could happen if you got the right person. But I would say, find the work you want to do, find the mentor that would benefit, you know, Bechtel or even Walsh for that matter, doing a hundred million, eh, $50 million of work with me eh, take it or leave it. They're no. not that excited. No, they're not. But a company that does 500 million and can bump it 50 to hundred million. Right. That's 10%, five, 10%. They, they are interested. They will work just as hard as you because you want both parties to put the energy. So find the one, you know, too many times. And again, I only shared this because I learned it. I'm not coming with the answers. Like I have the answers. It's no, 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 sharing no, experiences, right. right? Is that find the company that wants it just as much as you and understands it. And then we'll invest the time and energy because you don't want to have a day and you don't want to force them either. I see some companies saying, I keep asking them, they won't call me back. And they keep telling me they are interested. I said, walk away, walk away. You don't want this. You're not looking to convince someone. You yeah. know the marriage I talked about, right? If she don't want to marry you, go look nah, at somewhere yeah. else. Boy, don't try and force her. <laughs> no, yeah, you can't force her. Problems later. <laughs> right. It reminds me of 90 Day Fiance. <laughs> right. There you go. <laughs> yeah, that's true. They don't want to marry you. Don't marry them. Yeah. Ah, great point. Great point. Because, you know, it's funny because people ask me, all that, Eric, well, I'm calling these people. They don't call me back. And I'm like, okay. Well, I mean, I'm not sure what you want me to tell. You want me to tell yeah. them to force you to do business with you? Yeah, uh, that right. seems like that's going to be a really bad relationship uh, moving yeah. forward already. Yeah. And, you know, sometimes I, knowing what I know now, I sometimes think, well, why are you doing that? And then I stop myself because I was there. I did that. Mm -hmm. I felt that. Mm -hmm. I would say, you know, they would come to me and they say, small business sometimes say, you know what, I'm calling the contracting officer and they're supposed to do this and they don't do it. And then I told the SBA they're supposed to write a letter, but they don't want to write the letter. And I told the contracting officer, you know, oh, I should be able to come in and do a capability statement, but they don't want to take the time to meet with me. Right. I said, don't force them. Ultimately, on, uh, very similar to business uh, as usual in every sector, relationships are, are key here. And, and uh, you don't want to force it, in my opinion, in my opinion, right? You don't want to force it. You want to be humble, hardworking and humble and develop that relationship. And there are ways to do it. And so, you know, you might be knocking on a door that might not be the right opportunity either. So there's so many different, um, we, we found our niche, you know, we found niches that we filled that are good, mar uh, good revenue and good margins. Mm -hmm. um, can you remember your first contract with the federal government? Oh yeah. Oh, this is something I, and it was a nice one. And I did a joint venture by the way. So, so okay. it was a joint venture because the other firm had been doing the work prior to the requirement for veteran only. So today at the Veterans Administration. Prior to the Kingdomware rule. Kingdomware. So yep. prior to that, 
it was all them. It was wide open. And this yeah. guy had been doing federal. In fact, he was in the ADA program and he was doing work at the VA hospitals. He found out, he's like, who's veteran at the time? I'm, in fact, I was two years in the ADA. I wasn't really doing much. Okay. Right. Uh, Next okay. lesson is be prepared for you go in. Cause I would pay, I told him I would have paid cash money on the ninth year to have an extra year. I would have paid for it. That's how much it was worth. Right. And um, literally after I got out, contract officers were still calling me. I got to set aside. I'm like, no, you know, I said, I, I have a mentor I'm working with. Eh, wasn't, wasn't, wasn't flown yet. But um, the first contract, it was actually a jock contract. Okay. And I was nervous. And um, the margin on that jock contract was probably the highest I've ever seen, um, ever. Um, I'm going to... It was ridiculous. I'm nervous to even say it. It was so no. high. Yeah. And I remember my joint venture partner looking at me and telling me, my God, you're going you're gonna to be fine. You're going to be fine. One thing I did do, though, is at that time that that happened, it was me and one other person in the office. I, and that was an office manager who was supporting, doing everything I needed. Right, right. I, I bid it. And, and my mentor said to me this. He says, you're going to be good. I said, why? He goes, I said, I appreciate the comment, but tell me what you're thinking. He said, Dave, you've hunted. You've bid it, you've run it, you've closed it out. You know how to do every part. See, some of the challenges sometimes is if you have a team that you've built, which is okay, it happens, right? But if you don't, you got to know their work to know if they're doing it right. Yeah, no, that's true. And and that's why I asked you about um, working in this particular industry because construction is not an easy industry, not as a business, period. Um, the people are not always nice and always friendly the superintendents, the guys in the field. I mean, there's some tough people out there and they don't always say very nice things. Yeah, no, no, you're right. Um, well, wait a second. I did construction and restaurants, right? Those are the two highest turnover in, in business. I mean, you know, <laughs> you like, were, what's wrong with you? Right, you, know? you really like uh, had a, a thing of pain and, and suffering. <laughs> <laughs> the subs, the subs turn over too. And uh, I've lived it. I mean, you have to really understand how to do it and how to hedge your risk. I have some really, really great subcontractors. I get to know the owners. I get to know their families even, and we've done millions with them. And they went out of business on me and left me holding the bag. Wow. And so, so I remember calling and telling her what happened. David, things got caught up and she's been in business forever. But you have to do things the right way. And even though, you know, with the waivers, suppliers started calling me, I wasn't paid, but I paid her. I said, you know, I paid you for that. She says, yeah, I'm sorry. You're sorry. What, what's going on? So, so you have to run the business properly and you have to have your systems and processes in place for your industry to make sure you're protected and you had your risk. When you, get, when you first got started, um, was anybody on your team like family or friends? You know, um, for me, no, it wasn't. Um, okay. My father, I remember him saying, oh, your wife should work with you at the business. And I'm like, no, thanks. <laughs> I said, I have business life and home life, two separate things. I have some friends who have their companies pretty successful and their wives are involved. Um, and I tell them, I got to give it to you for that because yeah. I keep it separate. I mean, I don't mind hiring family um, if they're qualified to be on the team. But, um, you know, my employees are my family too. I mean, my employees right now are my family. I mean, I know all my employees, I know all their families and, and, and so, um, but no, I didn't direct family. I just hadn't had the opportunity to do so, it. Some, sometimes people ask me questions about getting started and, you know, obviously there's have issues with cash flow, maybe, the, you know, the roller coaster with not having enough contract and workflow, like you said. So they typically turn to family and friends or, you know, people that they can get with. But that was, that was pretty much the gist of that. Yeah, there, there's, there's, uh, that's a tough thing kicking it off with the uh, cash flow for any business. And I would say more and more, uh, I know for veterans, there's a lot of stuff too, but even for small business and through the SBA, there are, uh, there should be um, smaller loans, you know, that are available. And hopefully you got to look really hard at those loans to make sure that um, the profit margin covers it. Mm -hmm. Right. And then so that you're still making a profit mm -hmm. at the end of the day, if, if you're just, laundering the money back and forth what do you end up with at the end no yeah that's a good yeah that's a good yeah. point did you yeah. have any money when you got started so um i didn't and um i remember 25 years ago my mother let me nineteen thousand dollars a lot of money yeah wait wait, wait. 
maybe it was nine thousand. Yeah, it was nine thousand dollars. Nine thousand dollars. Nineteen thousand twenty five years ago yeah. was a ton. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's that's a ton of a... It was nine thousand dollars. Yeah, now it's like nineteen. Yeah. But but nine thousand dollars, and uh, she lent it to me to cover me getting up and running. Even that though, you know, I paid her back in the first year, but um, but uh, I still was floundering in the market, meaning that I didn't have a solid foundation and a plan of what I was doing and where I was going. So what kept you doing it? Oh, well, you know, I was I mean, doing okay. What, I mean, it, yeah. I was self-employed pretty okay. much, you know, made a little money. I was self-employed. I had fun. I was 20-something right. years old. So I was like, you know, I wasn't married yet. So I was just working night and day, you know, when the times were tough, Taco Bell and a cup of water, right? I was good. <laughs> You know, oh. I just kept going. <laughs> All right, I like it. No, I like yeah. it. That's awesome. You and, and looking at, at your background and your federal work, it seems like the majority of work comes from the Air Force, veterans, Army, and Navy, right? So the four yeah. agencies. Yeah. Um, was it harder to build the relationship with any one of those particular agencies than the other? Did you find it? Yeah, easy? I think the yeah. only hard thing is that that they they uh, retire or move to other jobs. Yeah. So you develop the relationship. And, uh, you know, six months to five years on my account, like I've had contract officers, the Navy that I've known for, for probably 15 years now and they didn't retire and they didn't go anywhere yet. And, um, those relationships are valuable because they want to know you can perform. And when they know you can perform and that if you get an opportunity that they don't have to sort of babysit you, they don't have to watch you, that you're going to get it done. And I convey that to my clients. I said, you know, my value that I'd like to bring is, let me get it done. Let me handle it. And if I do run into an issue that I can't, you know, if it's a wall, I can't go over or around because I'll handle it. I know their personalities. I'm not going to come and tell you the contract, uh, the, the, the project manager's not being nice. Right. That's not a problem, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. There's going to be people who aren't nice. Figure it out. Yeah. Um, but, but respecting their time, if it's, if it's not a, a wall that I can't climb over or go around, I will come with options and defer for their direction. They love it. Mm-hmm. In the beginning of our conversation, you said um, some people go around to all these networking events and these shows and conferences. How did you, so how did you first get started building those relationships? Well, I did have the joint venture. Uh, so the joint venture started me off. And um, sometimes I'm on a panel uh, at an event with that joint venture partner. And it's nice. It, and it's by chance. Literally, I was on a panel. I didn't know he's coming. He said, oh, you're on the panel. This is great. And they said that same question you asked. And I said, well, you have to find someone who's willing to work with you. And, uh, um, you know, uh, you have to be 51%. They're 49. And you're going through these projects. And, and they teach you and you learn. And then you graduate. But it's hard to find that person. I said, that person sitting next to me. Hey, you know, and, and he helped me do it. Um, I remember the time where I came back and said, hey, this next one I got. He goes, you do? You got your bonding up there? I said, yeah, I'm good. Mm-hmm. And before long, I could see it. He was looking for his next partner. So I had to hurry up and scale because he was like, well, okay, you're doing those now. I mean, the right. bigger ones I still did with him. I mean, if it's half a million, I'm doing it. Yeah. And it was a million, I'm doing it. Right. And it was three million, I'm doing it. Five million, I'm doing it. And I started growing. Yeah. And he was like, oh boy, our joint venture is over. I'm like, I got it. Thank you. And maybe there's bigger stuff we still join right. venture on, you know, right. 20 million. Maybe we get together, something okay. like that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And um, how long was that? How long was that marriage? I guess. Oh, uh, that 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 if, stretched three to five years. Okay. All right. Yeah. So you, and you, and you what just, I what you started yeah. going. Yeah. And what what I suggest to people is that opportunity is is um, the learning that you were talking about occurs through teaming, joint venturing, subcontracting. Any way you can get yourself involved in a project to learn the systems and processes as they relate to each agency. Because I will say, everything else being equal on a job, it's a million dollars. It's different delivering it from the VA. It's different delivering it to the GSA. It's different delivering it to the Navy. And it's absolutely 100% different delivering it to the Army. The Army has high requirements. And so that same job, you have a bunch of other things. And, and quite honestly, you know, I know it's a little scary when you look at these contracts that are 300 pages long for construction, mm-hmm. but, but um, you know, you, you, you got to learn and understand what the requirements are and you have to meet them because, um, you know, you don't want to get an, an issue with a prevailing wage right. or a wage requirement and or a reporting requirement. 
And we've had those, by the way. I'm, again, I'm not, I don't have the answers. I've, I've made a mistake and I've gotten up and learned. I made a mistake again, got up. I fell down, I got up. And so um, that's, that's what you do. You gotta get involved and learn it. And then set, when you learn it, you gotta set up the processes, right? So I tell people, I told my office early on, I said, just get a binder. The standard operating procedures are gonna, are gonna grow on us and we have all the different areas of um, you know, hiring and contracting and finance and marketing and uh, HR stuff. We'll, every time we do a new process, throw it in the folder. Mm-hmm. It doesn't have to be fancy, right, but right. we don't want to relive it. You, you'll relive it once or twice, but three times is too much. You got to learn from that and establish the systems. Interesting. Um, the, the opportunity where you taught the project management in Vegas for Perini. Oh, yeah. So the, can you tell us about it? Yeah, so I do that now. Well, what a treat, you know, they flew me down and covered my room and board, pay me a little money to go to Vegas four times a year. So it was nice. But I do that class now. It's a class in project management. So I will tell you this. um, How did I get in construction? I really have found and learned uh, and, and developed a love for orchestrating teams. See, we're delivering construction. And I think sometimes there's value by cell performance, a little bit of value, but really the true value we provide is understanding these plans and specs and orchestrating a team, including all the stakeholders to build that project. So I've really honed that and developed it. And I could, I do like, a, um, you know, it's like a two hour, if I do it straight, two hour start to finish construction project management. And so um, I offer that and, for free. I've been doing, I just go to the different agencies will invite me where they have small contractors who are trying to scale to be prime and I'll do the project management and really do in a way that challenges them because I've been to all these classes. They're great. You know, marketing's great. Motivation's great. All that without a plan is nothing. I mean, there's a place for motivation and, um, but without a plan, it's just, you're blown in the wind, right? I changed no, the totally. words on that thing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's okay. That's, uh, I like that. I yeah. like that. Well, we'll see people pick up on it. But, uh, but where, where did you learn all this from? Um, Any books? I know you took some math yeah, classes. You well, were at Kellogg School oh, of Management. Entrepreneurship, first of all. Entrepreneurship. Uh, I'll shoot them out real quick. Think and Grow Rich. Yep. How to Win Friends and Influence People. The E-Myth. Stephen Uh-oh. Covey. Seven Habits. Yep. Um, You know, Rich Dad, Poor Dad's got a little different swing on business. Those five books to me, um, and I'm sure there are other great ones. Uh, Me coming up as an entrepreneur, those are the books. As far as project management, you know, I realized and I believed that project management um, at the time wasn't a big thing in construction. Today, the uh, Army Corps is getting PMP for their PMs. Mm -hmm. And so I went back and got my project management certificate. And I looked at construction and I really immersed myself in it. And I went to several universities, you know, on my, on my, on my profile, it'll say stuff about University of Chicago, University of DePaul. You know, I got my certificate there, but then I would go to the university engineering schools and just learn the specifics, the specifics, right? So I say, don't let school interfere with your education. School's great, but just get educated. So I knew if I wanted to be the best at what I was doing, I needed to do it. And then I, you know, I consulted in that area early on prior to getting involved. So these first 10 years when I was scaling the business in um, non-risk work, I was doing work for the bonding companies and it was sort of forensic because the bonds would be pulled and I'd go in and see what happened. And ultimately it was one of those three things, cash flow, communication, or workflow. You stop any one of them and it'll pull the job south. I like that. I like that. That, um, that's that's really good. That because that actually leads me to um, a principle that Tim Ferriss teaches about deconstructing yeah. um, projects. And so you just named a few reasons why you believe people fail in the industry. Those three things, which is great. Um, a couple things, and I'm going to let you go. I know we're running on time. Yeah, we're good. Uh, yeah, okay. Um, so what would you advise? Or so you know the eighty twenty rule, right? So twenty yep. percent of activities yep. produce eighty percent of results. What would you say are some of the twenty percent of activities people can be doing to achieve? like the major things that they should be focused on yeah. when they're first starting. Yeah. Well, early on, I take the majority of that 20 and do the planning. You uh, see, why are franchises successful? They're Oof. successful because 
they're giving you the standard operating procedures, the systems, the processes and routines that if you do these activities will output profitability, right? Mm -hmm. So if you, they tell you to market, they tell you where to spend the marketing money, they tell you what to do, what colors to use, you need to know for your business, what are your systems and processes and routines? What do you do? When do you do it? And how do you do it in order to output? So, so as much as there's some latitude currently in my business, some of my, my, my guys who work with me, who, who I learned from all of them, we all learn from each other. He says, Dave, as long as we bid, we're going to get ours. So we know that bidding is important mm -hmm. and a percentage of bidding is important, but you know, there's a strategy uh, along with the systems, process, and routines. And you know, if you can put this planning up early and I'm not really big on, it's not, a, it's not probably going to be a nice thing for the bankers to hear. I'm not really big on business plans. <laughs> I'm big on what's your plan. Mm. Just how are you going to make money? You know, small business comes to me. I'm like, okay, here's my tell them, straight and simple product or service. Tell me what it is. Right. I say, what's your price point? Okay. And then I talk about this. I'll share this one thing with you because a big part of what I talk about, it's called the three R's and I think I coined it and, uh, and, uh, it's resources, risk and reward. reward. And what I say is we all have a finite amount of this first R resources in the form of time, money, money, skill, energy. It's all we have. And we will, we will use these resources to live our best life. Well, for your business, we're, what, what are you doing with your resources? How is that one person can take that day and within six to 12 months build something great? So, you know, one to five years, they're on top. Actually, um, just to share, um, you know, I scaled in 10 years. You know, I could did it in five if I know what I know now, mm -hmm. but I scaled in 10 years. So what are you doing at resources? Risk. There's risk involved. Yes. How does that risk fit for you? Are you identifying it, mitigating it, managing it, and knowing what it is? I'm not talking about, well, I'm an entrepreneur. I'm going to do it no matter what. That's right. pretty. What is the risk? Identify it. Know what it is. The return is the last R. What do you want? I know as an American born here, I was chasing the dollar. I was chasing money. I don't know if that's the best thing. And if it is, just pick something. How much money? Where do you want to hit? Because early on, I was just trying to make money. It's like, for what? I challenge the small businesses that I speak to to make that final R their life. You know, what is it? What do you want to like? Show me one to five years. Where do you want to be? And they'll say sometimes, you know, I've heard, yeah, hey, business is good, but I have a little challenge at home. You know, my wife doesn't understand this or that. And I said, well, hold off. Remember that first hour I told you? How much are you putting into your relationship, your family? Because these three R's work for business and life. And what's the risk if you don't put that time in with your family? Do you want a business with no family? Right? So these three R's I, I like to share is let's pull back. Let's reset. You're in business. And I did this talk recently, like I said, at this convention. I told people, I don't care how long you've been in business. Do you ever stop and reset? Do you ever stop and think, where am I? Where am I going? Look at your resources and say, um, how can I use my resources properly mm, to build something so that, you know, I can enjoy what I want for that final R? What's the reward? What's the, is it, is it, is it financial independence? And what does that mean? What's the dollar value? So really pick that target. I go back to my sharpshooter, right? Go pick yeah. that target. And what do I have to do with my three R's to hit that target at 500 yards? Wow. Well, wow, I think that was great. No, I think that was that. That's uh, we that was a great way to help close it out the section. Yeah. Um, yeah. No, I really do appreciate that because I mean I can actually visualize that target in my brain. Yeah, yeah. No, I appreciate it. I, 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 you know, humbly I go through what I do, and I've always deferred to the experts. But who are the experts, right? And uh, you get to a point where you're like, okay, you become the expert. You know what you're doing. Jump in the driver's seat. Be confident. I'm still humble. You know, I always will be. You got to be. And I'm still learning. You never stop. No. Um, but I think that, I think that um, I'm more open now to sharing my perspective. And uh, hey, listen, you know, it's going to happen 
and you know this, doing what you do, you put yourself out there, they're going to be critics. Oh, man. And uh, uh, Right? Oh, so yeah. I'm, yeah, I'm comfortable you. now and uh, might not be for everybody. I've gotten a positive response for what I'm sharing, and um, I'm going to continue to share it and give it away, and let's see people leverage it and grow and do well. I, I, um, and I, I'm a big believer in that. And I learned that from some of the same people that I talked about, which is give away 99% of what you know. I mean, just give it all away and you'll be surprised what comes back to you as a result of that. And, um, but you're right. When you put yourself out there, you have some critics and I've, I've had some critics, which was interesting because, um, you know, just to see people's perspective on it. So even people within our own industry. Oh yeah. Um, yeah. They've criticized. Well, well, I, I tell my kid, I said, you know, the bullies you see in the in the in the schoolyard, they just grow up. Yeah. Some of them make it, some don't, but yeah. they're still the same attitude. Right. Critical right. or or trying to yeah. get the light shine on them or shine it on you to get it away from them, things like that. And it's all good, you know. They 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 might need a hug. But 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 um, you know, I know you mentioned Tim Ferriss. Literally, my computer's sitting on a book to stay up a little higher. It's Tools of Titans, Tim Ferriss. So I know Tim, followed him for a minute. And, um, you know, the other guy, Gary V lately been yeah. checking him out uh -huh. and Gary's big thing is you got to let go. I tell, I tell people, let go of what people think. Yeah. I mean, have pride, have pride in who you are, right. Still come strong, but let go of the critics and it'll free you. Well, I, you know, I, and I have to tell people that work with me around the same thing. I said, look, when you see those messages, don't, don't feel bad because you know that we're doing something good and something positive. How, you know, when we're taking someone who's, like you said, they're national award winners, former contracting officials and contracting offers and sharing their story and telling people how to become more successful, how to, you know, how can we possibly be doing anything harmful to another business? We're just yeah. getting, we're expanding. I mean, I said, how you're, can we? <laughs> you're telling them the wrong thing. It's like, I'm telling them my opinion. Yeah, that's it. I go, look, they still they, got the greatest they, tool, choice. Choice, <laughs> yeah. They could, they could do it. They could not do it. Yeah. And then also, you don't have to listen. They could turn it off. Right, if right. they want to. But uh, no, I think that was great. I, I definitely I appreciate that. And I think that was a great way to close out. You've recommended the books. You told us about your stories, your pitfalls. You've given us some tips some tools. Uh, anything else that you want to close out? Anybody out there, you know, that believes that uh, I can be support, reach out. I mean, you, you tell me, how do I handle it? A lot of people don't reach out. They do, but they I handle it. You know, it's like, it's not, I thought at first, I, I'm telling everybody, I tell the, I tell everybody, any right. small business, tell them to reach out. And the ones who really need it, they do. Or the right. ones who have it, they do. Yeah, right. And that's okay. But the other thing is, yeah, I'm always looking for, um, the other thing I get from this is partnering and networking and uh, teaming and joint venturing, which no, um, yeah. I want to talk to you about after our call. <laughs> I, I agree with you. And, no, and it's true because I can tell you this. Um, so I'm going to DC in two weeks to speak at the mm -hmm. HubZone conference. Yeah. Right. So I set up just a little because I was in Orlando at another conference for podcasting and some people from, you know, that know me from the internet world said, Hey, we heard you're in Orlando. Can you stop by and meet with us? We met with a group of four people. So I said, okay, we'll do the same thing while we're in DC. We'll meet with a few people. So we said, we I put it on Instagram, you know, social media and stuff. Yeah. And I've had 39 people sign up <laughs> and I go, uh Oh, this uh, is this is this is the direction. You know what it is? Know. There's an age where you kind of out of it. I think I'm right out of that age. So I'm looking for volunteers. And I'll put this out there. I need someone to help me with my social media. As far as the message, because what you're doing is fantastic. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, um, I got some people I'll refer to you too, by the way, okay. uh, after right. this, uh, who would bring uh, additional value to your talks as well okay. for their perspective. But um but uh, yeah, you have to leverage uh, the new platform and, yes. and get it out there no, it's on, true. on social media because uh, it's so great now. And what I learned and I love is there's some really great people all over the country. Man. I mean, all over the world, but all over the country, there's some great people and Listen, it's so refreshing. Yeah. I, I, uh, we just released an episode last week, Alex Hernandez. Um, he's a partner. He's out of New Orleans, Hernandez Consulting Construction. He did 49 million last year. He's also a U.S. Got to stay right under the limit there. <laughs> but he's also from the Marines. Nice. And a great guy, veteran-owned business. He's now HubZone, and he's veteran-owned. And again, a share. They they pour it out. And uh, and then also, I get, I've been approached by people from, and again, using the new platforms like Gary V and Tim. Yeah. Um, I don't even have a 
fraction of the audience, but because I'm in my niche, yeah, people reach out to me from Iraq, Africa, oh yeah, Dubai, yeah. Germany, That's looking sweet. a partner. I I'm, just, I just, I'm excited. I'm I'm heading in the direction. I'm not going to do so much what you're doing, but I have this whole what I call a practical framework for um, building a great business and a great life. That's what I call it. It's a okay. practical framework, and I want to share it. I want to put it out there for entrepreneurship everywhere. You know, and I used to be. And we carry, you know, some of these guys are doing great things, but they're in their niches. Yeah. I'm just like, let's reset, come back and start at the basic because, yeah. because too many times we jump way ahead. I did we jump way ahead and I did it without the right foundation. And that was the challenge. Wow. Wow. Okay. Um, let's say some parting words. We'll close out and then that way okay. we can, um, yeah. After we close out, if we could chat, let me know. Yeah. Well, no, we definitely, definitely. Okay. Um, so no, you go ahead and you let me know what you like to tell everybody. I mean, we're going to make all of your contact information available, whatever you like on the website afterwards, once it releases. Um, but any parting words for everyone out there? Yeah, no, well, the, I can be, uh, feel free to reach out to me and you can share my LinkedIn, uh, okay. even my website and um, that's no problem. And uh, um, I'm out of Chicago, but if there are people in construction that are looking at team or partner too, they can reach out to me as well anywhere in the country. Okay. No, no. Well, uh, David, listen, I want to thank you today for sharing your information, knowledge, your wisdom, all of your experiences. Uh, you know, it was great. I had a lot of fun. Same here. All right. Thank you so thank much. You.